911, what's the nature of your emergency? Welcome back to the Tactical Living Podcast. I'm your host, Ashley Walton. And for today's episode, I wanted to share with you some really valuable information that I think we should all be well aware of in order to make sure that we're never making a decision based on emotion. So just sit back, relax, and enjoy today's content. Yesterday morning, I was super excited because I had the privilege of sitting in on a coaching call with Tony Robbins' son, Jarek Robbins, and he was just dropping value like crazy, and I was taking notes. I'm left-handed. I don't know if you, as you listen to this, might be left-handed, but usually when you're writing that quick and the ink doesn't have time to dry, your hand is just like covered in ink, and that is exactly what happened to me. And I wanted to share with you one of my biggest takeaways because um, it's crazy. Yesterday morning, I had this call with him, and then Later on in the day, something happened. I'm not going to share what the situation was, but let's just say it pissed me the fuck off. And it's like the universe was just divine in allowing me to absorb this information so that later on in the day, I would be able to use it. And what he shared was oftentimes we're prompted to make a decision when we get emotional, maybe, um, somebody breaks up with you or somebody takes something from you or like there are many reasons why we would instantly be emotionally triggered and our first instinct is to act and something that I learned was that if your heart rate jumps over 95 beats per minute you're actually no longer able to access your prefrontal cortex now if you're not sure that's your executive brain so that's the brain that tells us logically what we should do. And because we're not able to access that prefrontal cortex, it's because you're in fight or flight mode. You're not able to make a decision that's based on logic. And instead, when your heart rate is over 95 beats per minute, you're only making decisions based on emotion. So that piece of information is so valuable because it means that we are literally incapable, physically incapable of making, I'll say, quote, correct decisions, unquote, when we are in that state of fight or flight. And maybe you can attribute this in your relationships. I know um, there have been many times in not so much my relationship with Clint, but maybe external relationships where something happens and I'm instantly triggered and I want to change things or rectify things or, you know, do something to make me not feel that way anymore. And I act too hastily. And in retrospect, in thinking back on it, you know, you're kind of left with that feeling of remorse or that feeling of guilt. And that that only happens because you were not allowing yourself the space and time needed in between that incident to actually cool your shit before you make a decision. And sometimes it's very imperative for us to allow ourselves that time and space before we do make that decision, because sometimes the decisions we have to make are really big ones. And so yesterday, for example, I was fucking mad at something and instantly I remembered what I had learned in the morning. And I also remembered some of the tools that I needed to implement in order for me to not do something stupid. So I went outside, actually enjoyed some of the sun before it set. I live near the mountains, so our sunset happens about an hour, sometimes an hour and a half earlier than it does on the rest of the valley because of the way that the mountain shines on our house. If that makes sense, I hope I set that picture up okay for you. So I went outside to enjoy some of the sun The sun before it set. I actually went out into the backyard and I just hung out with our horse buttercups for a little while. And horses, I think animals in general, have this way of just knowing. There's such an understanding in that relationship and that bond that you have with your animals. So I just talked in silence with buttercups for a little while and 
Um, that definitely calmed my nerves a little bit. And I started to just walk around. And then I kept myself busy in the kitchen. Clint was stuck on a homicide last night and I made him a cake. And then I also made him some brownies so he would have them when he got home. And I just cleared my head. I cleared my mental space to where I can think logically about what actually happened, what transpired, what were all of the components to this situation, what did I need to wrap my head around before I just made some kind of rash decision. And I also told myself that I shouldn't make any decision until the next day, which would be today. So that's exactly what happened. And now today I feel so much better about it. I have a very clear understanding of... um, I have a very clear picture of what I didn't see before, and it feels good to be able to say that. And I've even heard other people use techniques like not writing a letter or not writing an email and sending it right away. Um, So writing that letter, writing that email, it's actually just talking with somebody who is going through some relationship problems, and he, he actually took days. What he did was he wrote her a letter on his phone, And he rewrote it and rewrote it and he waited three days and then he hand wrote it. But when he hand wrote it, he was able to kind of edit out some of that emotion um, before he then mailed it to her. And same thing with emails. We can write up an email and we could put it in the drafts before we actually send it out. And that's a great technique, I think, to be able to almost journal your thoughts out before you make that emotional decision and actually send it. Um, There's an app. There's actually several apps. They use the flashlight on your smartphone and it tests the pulse of your heart rate through the flashlight and the camera on your phone. So you can easily look that up. But if you don't have access to be able to test what your heart rate is, um, there are even YouTube videos. You can have a simple watch and use the the time on your phone. Like there are many techniques that you can do to test your own heart rate if you're not sure. But I think having that information is such a valuable tool for us because it allows us to give ourselves a little bit of grace and understanding that when we have done something stupid like that in the past, it's literally in our biological makeup. And um, it's no wonder why we acted and reacted in the way that we did. But in knowing that information, it's fuel for us to make sure that we are acting appropriately going forward. And of course, I talk about this all the time, but it is that amnesia effect because yesterday, had I not remembered what I just learned, I I once read a statistic that says that we only retain 10% of whatever we just learned yesterday. And if we practice it and practice it, then we'll learn it and we'll keep that information forever. I believe that that is true because There's some information about Christopher Columbus. (laughs) This is going to sound funny. There is this song that my kindergarten teacher actually taught us. And I remember (laughs) for like, I think it was, it was probably like an entire month. We learned this song. We sang it like twice a day. And it was in 1492, three ships sailed out to sea. The Nino one, the Pinta two, the third, the Santa Marie. He said the world was roundo. America, he found o the calculating, navigating Christopher Colombo. <laughs> like it's so funny. Kindergar- I'm 33 years old. Kindergarten was so long ago. But how much information is in that simple song? And I retained that just because of the repetition of the information over and over and over again. And a lot of times when we can, cons- <clears throat> excuse me, when we consume content, we don't want to have to like revisit it all of the time. But for anything important, I would recommend keeping a journal um, or Clint and I, we do strange things like we put post-it notes in front of our coffee maker or um, we will use lipstick to write on our mirrors inside of the bathroom, like simple things like that, where there are things that we want to make sure that emotionally and neurologically we're being triggered and given no choice but to remember them. So I hope that's a simple tip for you and that you understand that the fight or flight response is something that is in your makeup and it's something that we need to acknowledge and we need to be well aware of, especially when it comes to making decisions. And that is one of the main ways that we will make sure that we don't make a decision that we're going to regret later. So I will leave you on that note. I hope you're having an awesome day. And if you're just starting your day, I hope it's going to be amazing for you.